everybody, it's Tyler here at the Michigan State Championship. Check in team number 4381 Twisted Devils, who have had an absolutely phenomenal season so far. Three blue banners at three events. Congratulations on that success here so far. Take a look at Twisted Devils. By the way, they have an awesome uh, elevator arm, some modified thrifty bot on here. Uh, their intake, which they call their head, we're supposed to be talking about. And then we're going to show off some positional control, a little bit about their path planner. you got to check out Twisted Devils and learn about them a little bit more here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. If you're attending championships, come to the FUN and FRC Discord Meetup on Thursday, April 20th from 11 to 11.45 a.m. in Conference Room 360 CNF on the third floor. We'll have games, giveaways, time to socialize, and a chance to meet the FUN and FRC Discord staff. Get a reminder RSVP on the FUN or FRC Discords, and we'll see you at championships. Ash, let's start with your robot. Talk about some of the mechanical features of it. I want to hear more about the uh, intake, or you call it the head on your robot, and then we'll kind of work our way down uh, throughout the entire mechanical assembly. Yeah, of course. Uh, so starting on the head, we've uh, taken inspiration from Team 111 with these rollers, and they're all directly driven by gears here on the sides, and it all pivots. Um, Ryan, if you want to move down. <laughs> okay, so yep, those are all driven by belt down here. Um, and then do you want to go down into an intake? <laughs> So yep, all of that's pretty much 180 on that uh, pivot on the head there. And so moving down, we can pick up cues with these. As soon as they touch these compliant wheels, that instantly holds the cube in. And if you want to spit that out, we can pick up a head or a cone over here really easy. <laughs> yep, fitting the cone right up in there, holding that. Cone slides in and locks in. You said you took some inspiration from uh, 111. Uh, did you do any modifications to what 111 had? Yeah, so originally 111 had a... Um, they didn't have this filled out on the sides here, which did pr didn't provide much stability. And we actually added some more Lexan over there. That way we can have some spaces in there to hold that way more securely. Let's keep working our way uh, through the rest of it. You guys got a wicked elevator. I'd love to hear about uh, the modifications that have been made and the inspiration for the Thrifty Bot on that. Yeah, so the uh, Thrifty Bot elevator, uh, we've got the bearing blocks inside of here. Uh, do, if you want to just go into the, the human cone. Yep, so those Thrifty Bot elevator bearing blocks go up right there. And so down here on the chain tensioners, we've got our custom aluminum to make sure that that chain gets all tight up in there. And we also have the um, chain tighteners. That way, if chain ever gets loose, we can fix it right away. Looking at this entire assembly together, when you were uh, analyzing the game, why was this the best fit for uh, Twisted Devils? Um, it seemed to be extremely quick, um, and we like to be quick at Twisted Devils. Um, it, we originally started out with that human player slide because we were very versatile. Um, so if we go into Baby Bird, that's what we like to call it. <laughs> yep, so we could pick up from the human player slide, just dropping a cone down from that slide, picking up from in there, and it was very quick just to run back and forth for quick cycles. But we eventually found out that uh, the human player shelf was a lot quicker just to run up and slam uh, to make sure that that cone was securely in, our ro in a robot. Your team has uh, three blue banners this year as of recording. Hopefully more, we'll see <laughs> Hopefully. on this. Uh, but what do you really attribute to uh, all your success you've had this year so far? Um, yeah, our programming is really smooth, and I'd have to say that that's a very um, tuned and um, sturdy way to have a robot run this year. Um, I'd also say our strategy has been on point this year. Our strategy team has been very, working very hard at all of our competitions. That's a great segue to talk more about your programming on your yeah. robot as well. Let's hand it over to Ryan, who's going to cover uh, more about some of the uh, different set points. I know we'll be showing off some of your path planners as well, too, so take it away. Yeah, so our robot uses, um, our robot is very versatile, and that's one of the reasons we went with this design, is because we can reach anywhere within a radius of the pivot. It allows us to pick up from anywhere we want to and place anywhere we want to, no matter what the occasion would be. Um, so if you go to a forward cube intake. So this is our forward cube intake, so we can pick up from the front. And then auto cube. But we can also pick up from the back using our backwards cube intake positions. These are all stored uh, in a file where we have all the positions laid out and then we label them so I can refer through to the code 
and just call each position one by one whenever I want to go have the robot go to a position. This makes autonomous much more simple because we can run sequenced commands that will just simply tell it go to this position and then return to this position. So it makes our autonomous accessible for newer members to edit it and still contribute when maybe I'm not here or our uh, second programmer isn't here. So walk us through a couple more of your uh, positions on your robot and then we'll showcase some of your path plan or what you're doing for auto as well. Okay, so this is our uh, high cone placement. It sequences the wrist movement, so when it comes down, the wrist goes vertical in line with the elevator, and then when it comes out, the wrist then tips down, this to avoid the mid-cone pull, and this is all again through just the sequencing of commands. It then waits until we press the button to place, and returns automatically. Uh, in our code, we also are able to know whether we intaked a piece or just shot out a piece by looking at the velocity of the belt rollers. Using those, we can, um, we have cutoffs that basically tell us whether a piece is all the way in and stuck or shot out. So when I just press that button, it ran the intake until it got to a certain speed, and we know at that point the object has been ejected and it retracts back. Uh, you want to go mid cone? This is our mid cone placement. Low. And this is our low. Key feature about this is that we can actually drive in this position. So when we're placing low, all we have to do is just fly in. We can deploy this on the way into the community. And then when we get there, we just place and retract as we drive away. Walk us through some of your uh, path planner that you're doing and uh, how your automotive maybe have evolved over time as well too. Yeah, so at the start of the season, we were looking at the feasibility of different autonomouses. And I had just started working with Path Planner on this new robot chassis. Path Planner is nice because it allows us to edit autos and build them simply by dragging around waypoints like this. And then also we can assign event flags throughout the autonomous and these will trigger automatically as we go through and drive. And so as we drive through, it will trigger different positions and all of this is handled in this nice GUI interface which makes it accessible for younger programmers. The other benefit is that we can run we can run simulations to see whether we need more acceleration or a higher top speed in our autonomous. When we were originally trying to run a three-piece auto, we weren't getting back in time to place the piece. So we were looking at whether we needed to give a higher top speed or acceleration. So we were able to vary those settings up here and then see the predicted drive time up here and give us an idea of whether we were going to be able to complete the auto. This was especially helpful when we started prototyping a four-piece auto because we were able to see that we were going to take 13.8 seconds to drive and that made us comfortable that we could possibly pull this off. And have you uh, been able to do a four-piece auto yet? We're still working on it. I need to incorporate the April tags to improve consistency in our auto. But so far we've been able to run three and then maybe it misses the fourth-piece pickup, but it runs in that 15 seconds. Well, Twisted Devils, we really look forward to seeing, uh, of course, how you do here at MSC. So good luck. Good luck on the four-piece out as well, too. It'll be so cool to get that going. And wish you uh, best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, analysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.